information Delta, runway 29 arrived for Robin departures, frequency 132 Delta Blanked. Problems go away, you've got beautiful scenery, you get rainbows, clouds, mountains and deserts and flown around the world. It's taken me everywhere really, flying. It's great. Aminta Hennessy has spent almost her whole adult life gazing out a cockpit, either as a flight instructor or pilot. Flying is, is uh, not only an intellectual challenge, an academic challenge, because it's knowledge, it's practical, you've got to have motor skills, you're doing all sorts of things at the same time to make the whole flight a success, and that's a terrific challenge. I love that. Aminta was inspired to leave England more than 50 years ago by Australian aviation pioneer Nancy Bird Walton. She originally was patron of the Royal Flying Doctor Service. I wrote to her when I first came to this country and said, if you pay for my flying, I will fly for the Royal Flying Doctor Service forever. And she wrote back to me and said, it doesn't work that way, Minta, come and see me. <laughs> and I will tell you where you should go and learn to fly. That led Minta to the heart of Australia. I actually did my commercial license in Alice Springs. I got all my study done in the morning and I did the afternoon and evening shift in the bar. I became known as the flying barmaid of the north. But during the 1960s and 70s, not everyone wanted a woman behind the controls. I can remember Captain Swan at East West Airlines. I, I said to him one day, when are you going to take me on as a pilot with East West? And he said, over my dead body, I don't want any women in the cockpit. Changing jobs brought her to the same airline as Ray Clamback. They quickly fell in love. Good move. You agree? Yes, yes, that's exactly how it was. Oh, look at that old aeroplane over there. With an Ray and Deminta ended up working together for 42 years. Ray's been her strongest backer, facing down passengers who rejected a female pilot. So I brought the woman out to the aeroplane. She had to get in first, and she put her foot onto the step of the aeroplane. She said, it's a woman pilot. And she sort of froze. And I said, yeah, that's right, just jump in the back. I couldn't help but laugh about it. Yeah, oh, we don't want to fly with a woman. You know, you go mad every month. I said, oh, do I? I hadn't noticed that. <laughs> in 1978, they opened a flying school, which led to a remarkable achievement. Well, we decided to start a flying school and we needed aircraft. So we both went to America and we each bought a Cherokee Warrior. And to get them back to Australia, we had to fly across the Atlantic. One of my first achievements was to fly the Atlantic uh, solo. And I was the first Australian woman to do that. I think the airplane hours was about 163 or four hours from America and uh, to Sydney. And it took two or three months because we were also sightseeing. And then people begin to accept you, oh, well, you've done all those trips, you must be okay, you know? And so I've never had any trouble about being a woman since the mid 80s. Now, after more than 40 years of running this school, time has taken its toll. Well, I'm finding it increasingly harder to get out of the aeroplanes because my shoulders are bone on bone and I can't push off with anything and it's too difficult and that's dangerous. So I'm stopping. I can't think of anything. I've achieved it. more than what I ever dreamed of. Ferrying, Flying King Air is my favourite aeroplane, instructing, charter, overcoming men in the early years of saying they didn't want to fly with you and then they became your best promoters. I can't think of anything that I wished I'd done. I've done it all.
Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.